This is the Bill Press Show. In the state of Minnesota, an unusual candidate for governor, Mr. Jonathan the Impaler Sharkey, who is a self claim vampire running for governor of Minnesota. We saw that story and say, hey, we got to talk to this guy. A highly anticipated race for Minnesota governor should be even more interesting now after a new candidate revealed his dark side today. Jonathan Sharkey insists he is now the man to beat and says the job is one he could really sink his teeth into. Christ is welcome in a pagan home. Okay, let me put this back on the charger. Hello. What time is it here now? It's a little bit up. At um, 9 a.m. I'm doing Ireland, as in the country. At 9.30 I'm doing Grand Rapids. At 10 o'clock I'm doing another BBC interview for Ireland. At 3 p.m., I am doing Australia. All right, <laughs> Tell me who in our business is that busy. I'd watch your back, though. I've met a member on this site. They're, they're serious. So let's what does see. that mean, they're serious? It probably means that um, there's a bunch of hunters getting ready to come and stake our wonderful little vampire here. No, oh, there are vampire hunters? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Really? There, there are people this, that think they are Buffy the Vampire. If. Okay, outstanding. I am what is considered a sanguinarian vampire, which is a blood feeder. I am also a follower of Hecate, a um, the goddess of witches. Satanists and vampires get along very well, where vampires and witches do not. And, you know, I kind of jokingly always say that's why my parents' marriage didn't last very long because my mother was a Hecate witch and my father was Vampire. Jonathan the Impaler Sharkey, a self-proclaimed vampire, announced plans to run for the governor of Minnesota on the ticket of the Vampires, Witches and Pagans Party, formerly known as the Democrats. <laughs> Can you explain more to me? about your the relationship you have with with your half sister Daddy. my um father ended up getting divorced from her mother Lee. i forgot about her and what ended up happening was um back in uh, 1988 while i was over at a relative's house taking a swim uh this girl was a friend of my cousin's came in and i got introduced to her i thought she was very hot and sexy i um am not one for asking a girl her last name or anything like that so i took her home and one thing led to another i i have no regrets none whatsoever the night of you know june 30th to july you know as the morning was turning over to july 1st in Florida, Kat and I did have a hand fasting. Can you explain exactly what that means and, and the, the process? It's a pagan ritual as of marriage. I've always had great strength. Part of it is due to the fact that when um, I was younger, um, I fell down a flight of steps and what happened was I was in a body cast at the age of two and to get around I had to drag myself because the cast came up to here because it busted my hip and everything to get along I had to drag myself so I have a lot of strength in my shoulders and when I grab a hold of somebody you pretty much uh, forget about it um, from my father's mother's side and my family comes from Romania and they've been practicing vampires you know vampirism for centuries, some of them uh, may have lived as old as 120. So I grew up in this type of environment. What was it like? Uh, what when you first met? Were, were there sparks? Were there when you when you physically? Oh, when when saw each when other. When I first saw him, I was. How would you explain it? 
Yum! Uh, I like tomatoes. This is going to sound corny, potato. but the sun and the moon potato. rose in that moment. Potato! How often do you drink Jonathan's blood? Once a week, maybe. Once a week? Once or twice a week. I've been told my eyes turn red. I've been um, told they kind of like get cat eyes. I haven't seen that. People that fund the communities, the vampire and primarily the satanic communities, have told me the people that I've talked to from the communities that, you know, they hope I win. Jonathan for governor, how can I help you? A self-proclaimed witch says she's the victim of a witch hunt. Julie Carpenter says she lost her job as a school bus driver because of her religious beliefs. I made friends. I mean, I, they were telling me about, you know, hockey games that they won. Julie Carpenter says she was never even disciplined in her five years driving bus before the company fired her Friday. They fired me because I'm a pagan. They fired me for my religious beliefs because I'm not a Christian. Carpenter's husband announced candidacy for governor last week as a vampire, saying wife Julie was a witch. Days later, Princeton schools requested her removal as driver, saying she was not a role model, but never demanded her firing. No, we never said that. It was our recommendation that she not drive school bus. I was a school bus driver. Ever since I was a kid, I was fascinated with the big yellow rolling stick of butter. And, well, if you think about it, you know, it looks like a cut-off stick of butter with wheels on it. On the 13th, Jonathan was doing his his uh, press conference. I was there in support of him, and he mentioned that I'm a pagan. I mean, I've never hidden it, although I've never broadcasted it either. But um, and in association with him and the fact that I call myself a witch, even though I never said witch, I always said pagan. But um. <clears throat> I was informed after the bus route that I got fired. Oh, the kids well, were great. On a personal level. On a personal level, I would say good morning to them. I would, you know, have conversations. I knew, I know their names. They would write little letters to the to the drivers, and every pretty much everyone that I got, they were saying thank you for saying good morning to me. And I'm gonna start crying again, so. I acknowledge God the Father, but I hate him for what he's done, and I fully am not denouncing, denying, criticizing Jesus because of everything he endured. However, just like Lucifer, I've turned on God the Father, and I feel I am proper and just, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and what happens to me upon my final death happens to me. I do not feel that God the Father is somebody who should be worshipped and praised. I'm not perfect and I openly admit I have an evil side, but primarily I am for the innocent people. I die, I'd rather be in the abyss. I'd rather be a spirit to soar free among the universe and to go where I want to go and not be bound to one single place. Guns? No. Nah. No? You, you want to agree to guns? No. Nah. If, if, you know, if you want to kill somebody do it with a knife, do it with a sword, do it face to face. Why use a gun? So you're not kind of like Arnold did in Commando. You know, come on, be a man. You know, feel it going in. You don't feel anything. All you feel is just pulling the trigger with a gun. So you're not afraid of uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, black belt in judo? No, I got a black belt in street fighting. I I'd love to get um you with a little sword play um. I'll talk to Kat when she comes out here. So I personally feel the people of America that were attacked on 9-11 were attacked in large part due to Bush's negligence. I do not see with my demeanor any foreign terrorist wanting to try and attack. I don't think even an American terrorist would want to try to attack the U.S. while I'm in office. Especially considering the first day after I am sworn in I am going to personally impale 10 people that I know have violated my rights and have commi committed acts of terrorism that will be in my terrorist act. Christopher drew this for me. This kind of gave me that. is a card from one of the families that I drive. 
Oh, you got. You are number one best bus driver. You rock. Now, does that sound like I'm evil? <laughs> What would be the best job you could get, like ever have? Like, what would you choose over everything? Like, realistically, obviously, the best job would be a billionaire tycoon. If I had, but if I had the money, I would buy my own school bus, and I just might end up doing this too. If I this, if I if I get if I get the lawsuit, I don't what know. I would do would be to buy my own school bus and bring the kids to school that Peterson bus is too cheap to bring to school because they have to pay $54 a month and they don't give breaks to people that have more than one kid per family. I gotta see this. It's pretty tough. Pretty tough. <laughs> Hello? I like this shirt. No, I hung up on you because I don't appreciate being told what to do. Yes, you did. You asked me a question, I answered, and you said, no, you don't. Oh, yeah, right. Don't lie. I'm calling the police. Screw it, 911. You got a what? I'll call them 911. Hi, is there any way that you could uh, patch me into the Princeton police officer that's on duty? My family is harassing me. My cousin Patty has called me on the telephone three times asking me if I truly believe the way I believe and I'm like yes and she's like no you don't. If you, if you even dare to go in front of the judge about you being pagan, we're gonna, the whole family's gonna get together and, and, and storm, the, storm the, the court and tell them how Christian you really are. And, I guess I'll have to show her feeding then. No, no, no. All you need is 10 more stuff. Five, more She has dentures. She can't feed. I have to do it for her. I'm the last stop. Nice little puncture marks. Hey, no fighting on the clock. Yes, we can. Right there. 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 Right we are going back to the same TV station we were at this morning. What do you think he's going to focus on in his questioning? Unfortunately, probably totally about my vampirism and satanic beliefs and not focus on my agenda or, or my platform. If a terrorist is caught in this state, I've already told the U.S. Department of Justice, I will defy them, I will defy federal law, and upon the person being found guilty, I'll automatically impale them. But Minnesota doesn't have a death penalty, so you would have to fight. No, I would him. just flat out impale him. I wouldn't care. Would, I would take would my they chances go through the in court. court system first. Or? Yes, they would go through the court system first, unless somehow I caught them red-handed. Then it'd be like, <laughs> you know, if I saw it with my own eyes, that's a totally different you thing. Would still need to put them through the court process. Um, if they're an admitted member of Al-Qaeda. I personally would not and I would just do it and take my chances in court and if I got home and I had to build me a doghouse for a couple nights that's fine I, hey if they're an open there's, uh, there's ways if, honey, and you can't just because you feel that strongly about something doesn't mean that you can just take it into your own hands and do what you want to do there's ways to do it what if you know the person admits that they're a member of Al Qaeda and then after you impale them, it's discovered that the person was mentally ill. You can kind of tell people that. No, you can't. 
can. It has been proven that people just say stuff because they want to have the spotlight on them. I don't think anybody wants the spotlight of being in pound. Hooray right for Hollywood! See exactly what's going on uh, on air. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of my wrestling characters, if you go to my sports page, Jonathan Sports, is Tarantula with the mask, and you'll see the eyes are like air sprayed. Um, white with red eye in them, and then I got the fangs and the blood coming out. I scared the hell out of kids <laughs> in the beginning when I started working as tarantula. And ironically, me going public about being vampire is just like when I first started doing tarantula, and nobody knew it was me behind the mask. Mm -hmm. So I had to win over the crowd, and I won over the crowds. I mean, I was a heel, I was a bad guy. But, but I'm a big uh, wrestling fan, so I, you can use the terminology. Okay. So I was a heel, and though I'm used to working as a baby face, it's fun to be a heel. Well, yeah. You know, if you're pissed off at somebody, you get to tell them off. Right, and exactly. The, you know, I would go like, <coughs> I'd change my voice like this. I'd be, I, I used to call people in Indiana, you worthless IRLs. IRL stands for Idiot Redneck Losers. And I would totally change my voice. There were times oh. I worked first as Tarantula, and then I worked the main event as myself. Nobody ever knew it. Huh. Welcome back. I've covered a lot of political campaigns, and I can honestly say I have never seen a candidate run on a platform that includes impaling criminals in public. Come to think of it, I've never seen a vampire run for office either. All that changes tonight. Jonathan the Impaler Sharky is a self-proclaimed vampire who wants to be the next governor of Minnesota. He's quite serious about it, actually. The Impaler joins us live tonight from Minneapolis. Mr. Sharkey, thanks a lot for coming on. Tucker, please call me Jonathan. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing okay. I, I, I like to call you the Impaler. So you're a vampire. Uh, what does that yes, mean, I'm you're a vampire? I'm a sanguinary vampire. I'm a blood feeder. Well, whose blood do you feed on, and how do you do that, and why? Um, vampires, as you know feed off of other people's energy. Some feed off of blood, some feed off of emotion. I choose to feed off of blood. Well, I mean, it's it, a very healthy thing to do. It Let may be healthy, but it's gonna, I think it's going to scare a lot of voters. I mean, the idea you could be elected and go around biting people. I mean, where do you get the blood, and is it um, of the voluntary off, donations, or what? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, Hollywood has been so kind to make a vampire, especially his feeding practices, to be so romantic and erotic. You'd be surprised how many women have come up to me, especially when I hang out in New York City, wanting to be bit. I'm talking sophisticated, very rich women who enjoy the lure of being <laughs> romanced by a vampire. Jonathan, I live in the area. I would not be surprised at all. Uh, but, but where do you get your blood? Um, it's usually when I'm involved with somebody, they are the person I feed from. I have, I do not feed on men. I'm sorry, I just can't imagine myself wrapping uh, my teeth around a man. However, women, you know, women are beautiful and they have beautiful necks and beautiful arms. So, wow. however they want it, I will gladly oblige them as long as I'm involved in them. You got to think about the transfer of blood. Yeah. Is yeah, you do. Something sexual because you can get AIDS from doing it if you do it with the wrong person. It's yeah. changing. Food. You know, and they never say that in the safe sex uh, materials I get. I mean, there are all sorts of you know where condom. But they never say if you are a vampire, think about whose blood you feed off of. You know, and it seems to me an oversight. Now, uh, how does being your your vampirism fit into your campaign uh, promises, your your platform? Well, you have to think about this. I'm also planning on running for the presidency. Uh -huh. As a vampire, I am tough. I'm not going to back down to anybody. I'm not a wuss like George Bush. Yeah. I am not a communist. I am an American, as you can see from my shirt. Yeah. I'm not going to back down. I would an American love vampire get... in Minnesota. Yeah. Amen. I would love to get a hold of Bin Laden and impale him. Okay. I would also, as president impale Bush because I think he is nothing more than a communist in the Oval Office who has caused the death of innocent Americans in Saudi Arabia 
and in Iraq. I become president, I will have him tried, convicted, hopefully he will be convicted, and then I would impale him. So you're not, so what, I think what you're saying, uh, Impaler, is that you're not simply a vampire, you're a right-wing vampire. Correct. I'm an wow. American. I'm wow. not going Good. to sell I'm, I'm my not, people hey, man, out. I'm not against it. That's my favorite kind of vampire. Uh, uh, well, there's more to but you're also a, a vampire. Just, I, and I know that, and, and that is leading to my next question, just for the sake of full disclosure. You're also a Satanist? Because that could be a deal I killer, am satanic. I, think, for some I Like Lucifer did, I turned against God. Mm -hmm. I will not worship a God who causes the deaths of innocent children. I will not worship a God who allowed his only son to be used as a human sacrifice on the cross for what they believed the sins of the world and why he was dying would turn around and um, forsake him on the cross. Hmm. Okay, so you're, you're a more positive kind of Satanist. Now, can, what, can finally, give me your, what's your campaign slogan? Because I, I can think of a number that might fit. The New Deal for Minnesota. Oh, come on. That's kind of, I'm look, serious, you're a brother. Satanist vampire wearing an American flag t-shirt and a New Deal for Minnesota is the best you can come up with? Well, you know, I'm starting to worry that John Stewart was right in what he said about you, brother. I mean, I'm starting well, to wonder. I mean, well, come are on, you... that's the best you can do. I mean, I don't know. It worked very Jonathan well for Sharky. FDR. He if sucks. you know your history, if Blood. you know your history, FDR was one of the most beloved presidents this country ever had, and he was the one who came up with the New Deal. I know, but this is a new generation of vampires running for office, and I just think you ought to give some First, more time I'm to your campaign First, I'm the only one, slogan. but I'm, besides being a vampire, I am an American, and that's what you have to focus on. Not my personal beliefs, but my platform, which includes going after drug dealers, and my way of going after drug dealers is not to turn around and put them in jail, but I'm actually going to go to Sicilian families and have them attack the drug dealers wow. for me. And Which would cause its own immigration like really problems, by the way. Trouble. But we'll get maybe we'll get more deeply into your policy when you win the primary, Mr. Sharkey. There's no prepared. primary for me. I'm on the ballot November 7th. All right. Well, good luck, Jesse Ventura. Thank can you do very it. much. Maybe you can. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Bye. You had to throw a steward in there. I told you not to throw a steward. <laughs> but I didn't say the word. No, you didn't. <laughs> well, you, I didn't say the word. Thank you. I appreciate that. But you knew I was getting ready. You knew it was possible. 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 You might not be a Minnesota wolf too much longer. Nice. I liked him ever since my annual hunt. 16th, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, three days ago. And even go ahead and say that, I would think, say all of this, you know, all of this information. Who call who? Um, well, well, what happened? I'm not also the same person I used to be. What I hear, when I was sick, when I was in the hospital, nobody was calling up to see how I was doing. Well, when, when I came back out of what I was in, the coma and everything, and I was told nobody in my family gave a shit, and that they thought I was dead, I said, well, fine. But I felt, you know, my theory w was, if nobody in the Mitchell family gives a rat's ass about me, then I might as well stay dead. You're not, uh... Not Jonathan's biological son. No. Me and him got in a couple fights, and one time I had to call the cops on him, and I had to go over to I had to go over to my friend's house for the rest of the day. He kind of got real close and was talking bad about my dad, and he was asking me if I wanted to go outside and finish this because he was, I, of course, he was in front of me saying bad stuff about my dad and then he had his fist clenched and stuff threatening to hit me then he threatened to kill me once that's when I went into my room and called the cops is he the first Satanist you've ever met yeah um, since he announced his candidacy has it been chaotic has it been different has it been just the same like what's how has life changed for you 
your, your mouse fired. I and think I think I I get more attention in school from people, and it's not always good attention. I'm always I'm kind of needed around here more because I need to watch my little brother and sister while they go do stuff. And yeah, that's basically it. Do you think Jonathan's been good for your mom? Yeah, my mom seems to be doing good with him. She quit smoking. Um, she yeah, she's been doing. I think she's really been doing a lot better. I find witchcraft a little weird, like how they have all these like about the stuff in my mom's altar. How they can like charge rocks and stuff. I find it a little weird. This is the triple goddess, Hecate. The maiden, the mother, and the crone. Um, this is my Herkimer diamonds. Um, various, uh, I would have to look them up because right now I'm having a mind blank. This is quartz crystal. And this is selenite. I use these to, uh, I use this to cleanse. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's Tibetan quartz. Good for getting lost in um, if I'm ever really stressed out. Does it have a spiritual effect? For me, yes. If I'm if I'm stressed out, if I'm if I'm sometimes it even works if I have a headache. Certain Can things. you explain the sword? That's for directing energy. And I was in the sacred Celtic order of balance. From what I've heard from my dad and stuff, she's always thought that she was a vampire and could do stuff. Would you could you ever see yourself just hopping in a hopping in a car or sticking your thumb out and hitchhiking and just just leaving? Yeah. I could. Or I've I've really wanted to move to California for a while, but I don't know about leaving Minnesota. Is it because of family and friends or mm -hmm. that's what's holding me back from moving to my dad's, most of my friends in school. And the more you try, the more I'm going to turn around and push it. Well, because you don't like the fact that they jumped on you for being a pig. Daddy, he won't, he won't listen. Your mother's right there, or she can do Mom. it. Mom! Mom! So when I said, when I become president, yeah. when I become president, they can't do nothing to me. Uh, Vlad used to impale thieves. Even for as little as one uh, coin, he told the uh, merchant one time, a merchant one time who had his um, money stolen from his wagon to spend the night over. He sent his uh, force out to go get the, you know, track down the thief. What Vlad did was replace the man's money with his own money, but he added an additional coin. And the following day, the merchant went out to his wagon and saw the ba uh, a bag full of money like the bag he had, and it had an additional point. So he went to Vlad, you know, you're right. You know, all of a sudden I go back out and it's there, but I have one extra point. And Vlad told him, goes, well, fortunately you told me this or I would have impaled you along with the thief who originally took your money.
if it even does it. It was weird when it happened the last time. Just kind of stand back though, just in case. Nope, it's not going to do it. Wait, don't flick it down. Just let it drift <laughs> down like you did the last time. Well, let let, let it drift down onto the flame. You yes, I know that's that. fair. Well, you know, but you ain't doing it. You think it's because you're zapped energy-wise? Could be. Let the blood just go down. Get a little bit closer just as it explodes, you know. But you did kind of notice it flip a little bit, but the last time I went, I, I was know. looking through the viewfinder, but I heard something. I heard yeah. like a spark. Is it nine months of a yeah. election? Oof. Put out the fire. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean energy wise? All right, let's bring him in here. Jonathan Sharkey. Hi, Jonathan. Welcome to the program. Good to have you here. Jonathan, good to have you. Thank you. Oh, watch out. Thank you. And your wife is out there. That's Julie. Hi, dear. Hi, Julie. All right. Now, one of the one of the reasons that we brought you guys on today, you folks on, is because Julie was fired from her job um, as a school bus driver because it came out that you are a vampire. You're actually legitimately trying to run for governor in Correct. Minnesota. Now, I got to say, Jonathan, you know we get along well. <laughs> Do do you think there's a shot in hell that you're going to well, possibly? Maybe in hell. <laughs> maybe. That's actually true. That's... Ready, 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 mm -hmm. ready, 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 ready. Right, not in my mouth. All right, so this is real. Oh, you what? <laughs> She's a messy yeah. eater. And there's the holes. Here's the bigger one. Now. Mm, not the neck. Nothing in her mouth, nothing in her neck. See. Such a dirty eater. These rookies, you know. <laughs> Got it? What's the bag? I'm clean. Hello, I am Paradox. You're watching the Vampire Lounge. Come, enter the darkness. Hi, this is Reverend Charles Lapula of the band Dark Eden. You are watching Vampire Lounge. Good evening, I'm Madame Max here with uh, Vampire Lounge and I'd like you all to welcome our very special guest, Mr. Jonathan Sharkey. Hello, thank you Hello. for joining us. Hi Madame Max, how are you doing? One thing Satanists are, are honest. They admit to things. They're not going to hide things. They do enjoy personal indulgence, especially sexually. There's nothing wrong with it. What is it that you do as your primary occupation? 
Um, I have a PhD in political science. I'm always either wrestling, racing, working with my covens, trying to build my covens, or my party. Additionally, I, through Cats Underworld Coven, I make ritual cloaks. Do you feel that this educational background is going to assist you, um, be an asset for your campaign? Since I was so active in political parties and campaigns, getting a PhD cemented my knowledge. Though it's only a piece of paper, in reality, the diploma, the degree, it shows that I took the time out of my life to dedicate even more of my time to learning my trade and learning a very important part of my life. It gives me a lot more credibility because none of my opponents have a PhD. I thought that I knew it all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, everybody's I'm turning on saying Bush, and they know I'm better accent. looking than that. Uh, what you call him, a monkey? No, I call him a frickin' chimpanzee. Oh, do you look at him long enough and he starts looking like a chimp. Exactly. What What do you plan on doing in Iraq, and when do you plan on going, and how is well, that getting organized? I'm trying to do a major trip for July to go to Iraq. It shouldn't be a problem with my State Department connections. Mm -hmm. While there, I will visit the troops, especially the Minnesota National Guard. And I'll pull some strings and I'll get to go on a, uh, what they call like a recon, you know, checking out everything. Mm -hmm. And if we just happen to find a member of the insurgent, let the impaling begin. Really? Just, you know, however I can get a hold of him, I'll get a hold of him. And I'll send a message to Ben Laden and his followers. I'm not George Wissy Buss and I ain't here to play. Yeah. I become president. Everyone who's been tried and found guilty of inhumane treatment against Iraqis, I'm going to pardon them. And I'm going to have the Department of Defense change their discharges from dishonorable to honorable or even let them back in. I become president. Make sure future generations don't have to worry about being attacked by Muslims and stuff like that. I'll eradicate the whole country. I don't care. My country comes first. Substance abuse, Bush, you know, is even a girly man. Bush, L.A. Coliseum, just like the Roman gladiators did. When we get a hold of Ben Laden, I'm going to impale him where the Twin Towers used to stand, and I'm not going to impale him to kill him. I'm just going to impale him so he's hanging there. Then I'm going to let all the New Yorkers take their shots at him. How the hell did this happen? My space is primarily Satanist. My ultimate dream was to have a wife who could not only be the first lady of, a st of the state or country, but a queen who, you know, can pick up, you know, stand sword to sword with me, ruling, governing. She really ain't that way. She don't have that beast star. So in reality, I have a strange feeling that um, what I'm going to do, I become governor. Julie will be the first lady, but then I'll put my sister in as the secretary of state with full authority to act on my behalf. In other words, she will be my attack, my attack cat. When somebody kind of ruffles me the wrong way, I'm just going to say, sick. And that's what she's very good at. She knows how I think. We have the same mindset. I'm not playing. I mean, this is not a joke what's going on with the world today. I love it. I'm back home in New York City, my sister city. This is great. People are starting to think now I'm the reincarnate of Satan or I'm the Antichrist. That's the newest thing on the internet. I am a sanguinarian vampire, satanic dark priest, and I am proud of it. You know, you can't please everybody. You, you need to talk to this certain U.S. Marshal who's actually a supervisor for the Department of Justice. 
when I say I'm going to do a curse on the state of Iraqi Anna, they listen. I told them about <clears throat> two months ago, I said, I'm going to show Iraqi Anna my powers. Mm. I'm going to cause an earthquake. Did you know they had an earthquake there? This is my Book of Dark Shadows. Now, and this is my favorite one. It's called The Bones of Anger Hex. Why don't you earthquake uh, Pakistan? You ring the ritual bell three times and say, I call upon the power... Call upon the Ancient Ones from the Great Abyss to do my bidding. I invoke Chua, God of Anger, and creatures of the underworld, hear me now. Bones of anger, bones to dust, full of fury, vengeance is just. With this hex I curse your soul, so it be. This is the color don't wear on tomorrow. Okay, and it's not a cape. I hate when people say it's a cape. It's totally an intimidation factor because when people see that, they're automatically like, Ooh. Hey, Kenneth Cole, you need to start making like the American sunglasses again because those broke and I got them crazy glued out the side. I'm at the point now that if they don't want to vote for me because I'm satanic, mm -hmm. then in reality they're gawking at everything this country was founded upon. Yeah. And they deserve what they get. Right. Because I know and I think you're well aware, my ticket's pretty well made now. Uh, if you could just explain who everyone in the room is. Okay. Um, my name is Lourdes Flash. I am the present wife of uh, Rocky Adonis Flash, a.k.a. Jonathan Sharkey, a.k.a. John Albert Sharkey, a.k.a. Kathleen Sharkey. Um, this is my fiancé, Carl Hyde. This is my son. S sit up and look at the camera. That's my son, John Sharkey, Jr. And my daughter, Danielle Sharkey. trying to get, you know, because of being fired, she thinks, you know, she should be getting the interviews like I'm getting and stuff. That's what was the um, downfall of my last legally recognized marriage, that, you know, she couldn't handle the fact that I was the star, and she wasn't. I right. got into wrestling, she decided to get into wrestling. That's Susan? No, I was a married to Susan. Okay, who was that? Lourdes. One who has my two children down in Tampa. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, it's like I've dated so many models and stuff. I'm so used to, you know, dating women like that. One thing I can't handle about Julie is her kids. I'm a former drill sergeant. When I snap my fingers, my kids know better. Watch how my children are around me and see how Julie's are. My kids respect me and they fear me. Because they know I'll beat their butts. Her kids have been running her life since far back when. And I don't play that. My kids don't run my life. You know, very seldom do you get multiple chances. And so far, you know, as a result, maybe part the stars being perfectly aligned or the fact that from my wrestling and everything, I know how to work with the media. Be that as it may, my star is flying up off the chart so fast, it's not even funny. So, I'm... Like I told Trey, I am going to ride this for all it's worth, and I don't care. You know, anybody tries to stop it, I'm going to go right through them. There's nobody that's going to be a dead weight to me this time. There we go. Right in the Are we off camera? There's no guarantees. I'm going to 
Julie's kids don't straighten out or become at least more tolerable come summertime, you know, if they end up being the uh, try or possibly are a right uh, way to me, I'm going to cut, you know, I'm going to cut them in the heartbeat. Here. Vlad Tepic's Dracula never did die. That he's like one of the first true immortals of the world. Because there's no proof of, you know, no actual proof where his body is. And in Romania to this day, he is still worshipped and even thought of by some people as a god. Oh, uh, that's cool. It's bullshit. Whatever. Get the fuck out of here. You don't live here. You don't live here. You're not on the lease, so move. Whatever. Her, her son had a horrific accident last weekend. Totaled his car. I ain't saying nothing. I don't know, man. I can see it's all jagged and crazy looking. Well, I want it to be jagged. Ah, oh, we're almost getting there. Starting to break away. What bullshit reason again? Well, it's like, what, what can they do? You can't saw at night. You can't put a light on. There's a uh, uh, vampire on your neck. <laughs> Give me. Oh. He's already souped. Right, put him, put him by. Right. One time, I had, my mom got fired, and it was like witch burning. Witch burning is when mom was a very good driver. Got Julie. She really was sad, crying, because she liked that job. Well, what do you want to do when you get older? What kind of job do you want to do? Drive bus for my mom. Nice. Oh! Get <laughs> away. Oh. Hey! hey. Chicken taco. Chicken taco. Oh. Me and my sister used to smoke. No, you didn't. Uh-huh. You couldn't even light a lighter if you tried. I could. I know how. Child safe wanted to beat you. But then I just what like... What did you smoke? Twigs? No. Bark? Cigarettes. You did not. Uh huh. Did you go? Did you walk to the store and buy him? No, I stole him from my mom. Oh yeah. Yeah, half. Why would you ha do something? And the, and the floor floor was on fire, and the floor was on fire. How did your mom <clears throat> stop smoking? Because Jonathan came here and told her that. All right, get a picture of Jonathan. Once. All right, all right, right. All right. Oh, okay. And and then, then. Jonathan came here and told our mother to quit smoking and drinking. And one time, one time she got my tooth out. Really? You I do? kicked it out. I got served papers today from uh, in regards to my kids. It pissed me off, because everything in there is, it's, it's fake. He's trying to say that I'm using drugs. I have not used drugs. I was a school bus driver. I had random pee tests. There's no way you can fake a pee test. And he's, trying to, he's trying to say that Petey taught Christopher how to roll a joint.
been uh, for the past going on eight years. I've been trying to get a divorce and he has refused. I mean, completely refused. He started developing this this uh, uh, obsession with uh, Dracula and his ancestor and he started saying that he was a vampire. Says he ever tried to blood feed with you? And about our third year of marriage, yeah. How'd that go down? He, he bit my neck, he bit me in the neck and I, it, it was hurting me. So I elbowed him and I said, what in the hell is wrong with you? While you were married, did you mm -hmm. attend church regularly? Yes, what? we did. We actually did. What, was I, he well liked? Yes. When he was a, a small child, I understand that he had a, a sister born named Kathleen, Wait. right? Mm -hmm. can, can you explain to me what you've heard mm -hmm. about that? Okay, um, as a matter of fact, I have her death certificate. You have her death certificate? I have, I'm a, I have possession of her death certificate. His mother went into premature labor and she gave birth to a baby that was born weighing a pound, uh, one pound, uh, eight ounces only. And of course the baby lived only a couple of hours and the baby died. The father beat the mother and caused her to miscarriage. Because from what I saw when I met him, he had over seven, eight or more photo albums of every day of his life. I saw one picture in his photo albums where he had a cast from the waist down uh, and it covered both his legs. So it was from waist to both ankles. His mother had thrown him down the stairs. He destroyed their photos. Which made me very angry because I, I've always felt that my children, his children, had a right to know what their grandparents looked like. Never have they seen a picture of their grandparents because he destroyed them all. When Danielle was two and a half years old, he actually signed an affidavit where he disowned her because he looked, she looked like his mother. One time he kept hitting me and hitting me and I got upset and I was afraid that he was going to do something else. So I tried to like sneak out the window with my little brother and he caught us and JJ blamed it on me and he threw me down a flight of stairs and put a knife to my throat saying if you ever try to do that again I'll slit your throat. Do you love your father at all? Yes. I love him, but... You love him? Mm-hmm. Of course, he's my father. I have to. Yeah. His mother left a very large inheritance, and it was to go to, to, to Jonathan, John, Rocky, whatever. Um, and instead, during the last uh, weeks of his life, of her life, I'm sorry, excuse me, of, of her life, she changed it from John to her sister, and then from her sister, she changed it to John's son from a previous marriage. I hate to think that that boy is even going to see this film because he thinks his father is dead. A letter that I wrote that she wrote to him prior to her death uh, where she stated, and to you, John, I leave you a dollar because that's what you are worth to me. And Rocky left his first wife and that infant when he was six months old for the other girl simply because the girl was a virgin and he wanted to bet a virgin. We've done lots of interviews with Jonathan Sharkey, a.k.a. Rocky Flash, but none as bizarre as the one we did inside an Indianapolis jail. The vampire is wearing an orange jumpsuit now after being picked up in Minnesota on two arrest warrants, one for probation violation and another for escape. Didn't know about his arrest warrants? Well, that's not the only thing he's been hiding. You did not put out your whole past there, did you? I didn't feel it was relevant until after... Why was wouldn't it be relevant to the people that you're asking to vote for you? because they were already showing how judgmental then they were. Then why would you want to run for governor of that state? To change them. To show that a Satanist is better than Christians. Using two different names, he's been arrested half a dozen times in three states. Each of them, he says, bogus busts and therefore not necessary to disclose. Did you tell the truth? I didn't lie. But you didn't tell the truth? I didn't lie. I didn't You did not something. tell the entire truth, did you? If I. If the people weren't so judgmental, sure, I would have. You chose to hide your past. I didn't bring it forth. So, so yeah, if you want to call it hiding, we'll call it hiding. You hid your past. Okay, I hid my past. Here's another detail Sharky left out. Someone has convinced four different state and federal agencies 
he's dead. In fact, we showed him the program from his New Jersey funeral, November 7th, 2004, where his wife of 12 years, Lourdes Flash, told us she went to say goodbye. And who am I talking to? I'm not talking to a dead man, am I? I've died twice before. But don't you think this sounds nuts to a rational person? Well, let's put it this way. Jesus is not the only one who could raise somebody from the dead. Lucifer can too. Rocky made us all believe that he was dead. And Jonathan had everyone believe that he was dead, how? He just informed everybody through a friend that he had passed away. So were you around when he, he had his suicide attempt? Where, what was it, 120 quaaludes that he took? He didn't take anything. It never happened? It never happened. It was all a lie. It was all a make, make up, make believe, Another one of Rocky, Jonathan, Kathleen, whatever you want to call him, uh, fantasies that he tried to make everybody believe. Why do you think that he makes things up? To get attention. He wants to be the center of attraction. That's one of the reasons I left him. What would you like to do for a living when you Skate. get older? Skate? Yeah. What would be your second option? Being a pastor. Being a pastor? Yeah. Really? Yeah. How do you think this makes your father feel? Like an idiot. One of the reasons that I left him was because Rocky had told me that he felt more like a woman than a man and that he was going to get a sex change. But what was even more of a shock was seeing him arrive from Indiana dressed as a woman. This is when he went future to from Indiana. And when he took off his jacket, when he got out of the car, I noticed he had... Stuffed bra? He had boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> he actually, the man actually had boobs. Like he was wearing a bra. A bra, was it stuffed? Or no. He, he had actual it was, he actually, female breasts? Yes, he does. Implants? He, or I, I, no, no, they can't. I don't think they're implants. I don't know what the, I, I don't know. Was it obvious that? That he was a man? Yeah. No. When he wears female underwears, female panties, um, he kind of like um, tucks it between his legs. I think the man is basically mentally ill. Needs a lot of psychiatric help. And if you ask me, I think there's a dual personality there somewhere. Because there have been times <clears throat> when I have felt that I have been dealing with two different people. Completely two different people. One being... Jonathan. Yeah, the and the other one being Kathleen. There's no such person as Cat. Cat is Kathleen, and Cat and Kathleen are Rocky. He had been physically abused by his mother. At one time, he told me that he had been sexually abused by his father, and um, that his mother, after losing the baby, Kathleen, had started dressing him as a, as, as a girl. When when he first told me, I was shocked because I know that things like that do do happen, unfortunately, to children in this world, and that I was shocked that it could have happened to him because at that time I loved him. Do your friends know about what you have a father named Jonathan Sharkey who's a satanic vampire running for governor of Minnesota? Nope. You don't want him to know either, do you? Nope. It's better that way. Does it embarrass you? Mm, yeah, kind of, sort of. Because I hang out as like a bunch of kids from my church, and if I tell them that they might not want to hang out with me anywhere, they're going to think that I'm a, sat a satanic person. Are you scared of your father? Yeah. Do you miss him? Kind of. Yeah. How, like, he always used to be funny and stuff, and act stupid at times. It just make me laugh. You actually did have some good times with, with yeah. your father. Like, he's taking me to like a bunch of races. He taught me how to drive and stuff. Was he loving? Did he hug yeah. you? And yeah. Did he tell you he loved you a lot? Yeah. Do you think there's a different person inside of him? This yeah. cat that they speak of? Yeah. Like, I think that like 
if he wanted to, that he could be nice, and if he didn't want to, that he'd be mean. Is there anything you'd want to say to him? See him right now? Did I miss him there, I love him? That you miss him and that you love him. Don Basher, here we come. Where, where are we at now? We're at the Sleepy Hollow Trailer Park Campground. Oh yeah. Ooh. Are you uncomfortable here? Actually, that boat there was in the James Bond movie. This is pretty awesome. Somewhere at the house, he gave me a one of those paperwork to authenticity or whatever the heck you want to call it. Yeah. Of where it was actually in the movie. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, James Bond boat. Sean Connery drove this a lot. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. I've been in the business. Almost all my life, I went to service, got out of service, and made a couple of wrestlers, and I always wanted to do it and stuff, you know. So it's one of them deals where uh, one of the Scuffling Hillbillies down south, he had a training camp, and I wanted to wrestle, you know. Anyway, didn't have the money, just out of service. Anyway, so I worked in the in the gym and stuff to cover my wrestling fees and stuff, and then that was 16 years, uh, when I was 16 years old, and I'm 48 now. It's, do it every weekend. How long you been in the business? Body says too long, the wife says too long. Uh, roughly 18 years. When did you actually meet Jonathan, or Rocky Flash for the first time? Jonathan Sharkey slash Rocky Flash. Um, I'm gonna say probably right around 2000. Okay, so you've known him roughly six years. Yeah, roughly six years, right. First impression when you saw him in the ring? In the ring? Mm -hmm. First impression. The boy needs to go back to training school. But yeah. He did not know how to wrestle. <laughs> He's probably one of the worst guys out there that says that they was a professional wrestler for the four or five years that he said he was in it. Did you train him? I retrained him. You know some Satan worshippers? Yeah, man. I got a nephew that's one. He's in Michigan State Prison right now, or Michigan City Prison here in Indiana. Anyway, uh, he, he's like I said, they they believe that if they kill somebody, they get their powers and stuff. Anyway, I went and seen him. Anyway, and like I, like I said, you know, I asked him, you know, if you've got all these powers, why why are you still in penitentiary? He he's got life, and he's done. A, he committed a crime when he's 15 year old, and he'll be there to. What do you do? Uh, beat a woman, to, uh, old woman, to death with a baseball bat. Because he was in so deep. So Satanism really bothers you? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, cause I don't believe in it myself. Cause like I said, you know, it's only one boss, and he ain't the one. Which the one? Jesus is the one. That's uh, that's the only one you you know you gotta have God in your heart, man. If you ain't got God in your heart, you ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? You know that's that's the way I believe. He's one of these guys that you you like him and you hate him both at the same time. You know, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but you know, he's a great guy. Um, I didn't mind him being around. The wife didn't like him being around because she told me that he's full of crap too. Was he always polite? Oh, very polite. You would not meet anybody that, as polite as that guy. Do you think that think he it. actually worships Satan? I, th I, think, I think he does. But all that bad, you know, like I said, that ain't the way, you know what I'm saying? I mean, what, what, what skills he's got you know, we're, 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 we're figures for kids, you know what I'm saying? Kids love wrestling, you know what I'm saying? What is he doing to Role the, model. That's right, what is he doing to the kids? He's tasting them the wrong way, you can't do that. Gotcha. And he does a good job at, he, he got to get with the program, he ain't head the right direction, you know what I'm saying? Ace, would you vote for someone like that if they had us uh, and... Nah, well look, if you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nobody, brother, you know what I'm saying? Rocky died. Apparently. How'd you find out? Girl named... Actually, I got an email said that Rocky passed away the night before that. So, you got know... an email from? Cat. 
from Cat. Uh huh. So I kept emailing, you know, Cat, telling her she needed to call me because I want to find out what the hell's going on. So she calls me. She says, "Yeah, you know that Rocky passed away the night before that due to some complications of the surgery that he had with the stomach." On the phone, Cat. Yeah. You you talked to Cat. Yeah. On after the phone. he supposedly died, I talked to Cat on the phone, and she told me that he died the night before that. And this is my exact words to her. I said, all right, tell Rocky to quit trying to rib me, get his damn ass on the phone. And what ribbing means is in the wrestling business, you're trying to get over on somebody, playing jokes on them or whatever. Mm -hmm. this, as soon as I said that, that girl went T totally ape shit. I don't know what the hell you mean by thinking Rocky's not dead. We just got him putting the guy in the ground, da 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 da. I think I know the guy pretty well, you know. I would, if I was a betting man, I'd say he's working everybody just to keep his name out of the media. If that asshole did not get arrested, he would be governor. So I, I, I'd like to see some moves that Jonathan actually worked on a lot. Don't hurt me. <laughs> <You're stupid. laughs> just like that. Can you dance? You saw the thing is dancing. You're a white boy, you can't yeah, dance. Yeah, I'm white, come on. You're killing uh, me here. All you do is, yeah, just move me. All right. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. I'm gonna do yeah. <laughs> Reverse. Yeah. Him lock. Turn. I keep gonna tear my arm off. I ain't trying to. No, you're fine. Watch this. See the nose? Close up on the nose. Yeah. Huh? Yep. Ready? Ooh. Like you're in love with me. <coughs> See how tight I am? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Tight at all. It's great. Now pull your head out for a minute. Ah. Pull, pull, pull it out. out. Pull, yeah, pull it out. Get back in there. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Ah. Boom. I'm going to flip over? No. Ah. Damn. Ah. You ready? Sort yeah. of. Oh. You know where. I ain't going to hurt you. You know. Mr. Sharkey came to our attention uh, after he uh, sent in what we perceived to be inappropriate communications. There, are, there were two outstanding warrants for his arrest, uh, one for escape and one for stalking. He can be viewed as, as quite a nuisance. We don't believe Cat is, a, is an actual person. Uh, we believe Cat is a, a separate personality of his. We have absolutely no evidence that, that she actually exists. He purports that, that he and I have some sort of uh, friendly relationship, and that's simply not true. I think it disturbs him that he was unable to come back to Indiana uh, for fear that he would be arrested on the warrants that he ultimately was arrested on in Minnesota. Jonathan often has this, uh, this idea that he was untouchable. And it, it was, from my uh, point of view, it was unfortunate that the media, uh, some media conglomerates were giving him the forum that he so much desires. He, he, he desires attention and they were giving him that. And it, it's a snowball effect. You give him a little bit and he takes advantage of it. He believes in his mind, I think, that he's becoming more and more powerful.
Hello my fellow Americans. Thank you for attending this movie. This movie was done based on the actual events of my life. In the beginning, I rode a wave of success and privilege. As the wave began to rise, it suddenly went flat. Sometimes, no matter how much you want to succeed in something, you'll get thrown a curveball. In life, you never know what's going to happen from day to day. Take my story. You know, I was doing a TV interview and five hours later, I was in jail. But did that discourage me? No. Life shouldn't be a discouragement. Life is a roller coaster, a never ending ride. To succeed, you need to stay on the ride and take the good with the bad. I am not perfect, just like none of the people in this documentary are. I hold no animosity towards anyone, and I hope this movie will be an inspiration to you that no matter what happens, no matter how many times you get knocked down, it won't matter. As long as after you get knocked down, you stand up, brush yourself off, and like Rocky Balboa, get back into the fight. I thank you for attending this documentary, and please feel free to contact me at any time through the internet. I would love to hear your thoughts and your reflections on this documentary. On a personal note, to Susan, to Lourdes, to Julie, to Trey, to Brian, to everybody in this documentary, I wish you the best and may the gods and goddesses bless you and keep you safe. Peace. Empty pocket Take hold of the lamps You turn your thumb and fang All peeled and threadbare I'll lead you down Lead you down From the hip towards the fall So sell your blush Turn red so slow We couldn't remember If it was ever pain 